Hey, can I get the bathroom key? Sure thing. Return it when you're done. These are disgusting. I already know this is gross. It's a veggie chip. How is it sugar in this? It's sugar in this. I'm just healthy <laughs> eating is maybe a sometime thing for you, or maybe it's an all the time thing if you happen to be a vegan. This is really good stuff. <laughs> or <sighs> okay, uh, what if uh, we just rolled around on this ball for a while? You put your food in, and the grease rolls down, and because of the slanting of it. The fat rolls down. It's different. Inside. Now walk up four. One, two, three, four. Now double here. That's it. You're doing fair. I'm not doing that. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, anyone ever owned one of the, one of those grill masters? Anyone? Yeah. Show of hands. Show. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You're still using that? That's right. We just call them panini presses today, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, we know that as funny as those videos are, we kind of laugh, we kind of chuckle about it because we realize that there really is no magical machine that melts away the fat from our bodies. We know that there's no fitness routine that does the same, right? We know that there's no secret pill, there's no secret diet, there's no secret food that gives us the body we've always wanted. We know that, right? But yet every year, growing a healthy body is the top American New Year's resolution, when we think about that, the sad thing is the data says that usually, usually 80% of the time, those resolutions will fail within the first 30 days. That's kind of sad. But actually, it's, it's actually good for those of you who go to the gym because you know in the month of January, you can never find a parking spot. But when February comes, you get your parking spot back. You get your bench press back. You get your elliptical back. It's good, right? Life is good. And so we can laugh. We can have a good time. We can talk about growing a healthy body and having a good sense of humor, because laughter is good for us. But we also know that growing a healthy body and the topic of that is also a very personal. It's a very personal topic and sometimes very painful. I reflect on my own upbringing, my own family. I grew up in a family where food was the center of everything we did. In fact, I was taught at a young age that you eat as much as possible, as fast as possible, so that you could get seconds. And if you were mad enough, you got thirds, right? And then I joined the army. And then in the army, I got there and the drill sergeant said, hey, eat as much as possible, as fast as possible, before I kick you out of the chow hall. So I, I was already trained. I was trained. I was proficient in that. So I gained 10 pounds at basic training. Well, then the problem is I continued my life. And for the rest of my, really, I, really many years of my career in the military, I continued to eat whatever I wanted as fast as I could, whatever, whatever, I, whatever I could eat, I ate as much as I could. And so the bottom line, though, is the sad thing is, even though I was already, I had an undergraduate degree and a master's degree in the study of the human body, and I was teaching at the United States Military Academy, and guess what I was teaching? Health and fitness. All that time, I was eating that way. I was living that way. I wasn't exactly practicing what I was preaching. And then in January of 2002, I was at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. And while I was there, the doctors told me that I had a 95% blockage of the main artery in my heart. That's right, I was 5% away from complete blockage of the heart, the main artery going in the heart. And so over the next two years, I actually had three heart surgeries culminating with a single artery bypass surgery at 39 years old. And so for the last, really, 14 years, though, it has been a hard, long, painful journey to live a healthy life, to help me grow a healthier body. But in that time, it has been a powerful, powerful reminder to me of God's power and God's presence. Because throughout the entire time that I had been going through the surgeries and now up until where I'm at today, God has been present there with me. And he's taught me some very powerful lessons. And so this morning, I don't want to come to you and lecture you on the benefits of growing a healthy body. I don't want to do that today. Instead, I want to do is I want to come alongside and I want to partner with you. I want to sit down and I want to have a conversation with you about what it means and why we should care about growing a healthy body. What does it matter? 
So I want to encourage you today. I want to inform you today. But most of all, I just want to open your hearts to what God wants to do in you today as you hear this message. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the good gift of our bodies, Lord. We thank you that we can come together as a body, your body, your church, and we can talk about these types of subjects, Lord, not because we've done it right or not because we're living perfectly, Lord, because we know that you have a plan for us and you love us. And so with my brothers and sisters today, may you be present, may you be powerful, and you change us in the way you would have us do that in the power of your spirit and your word. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, anytime we begin a, a discussion about growing a healthy body, we got to start with pretty much the five pretty much practical tips that everybody looks at when they talk about growing a healthy body. Now, there's no shortage of that. You can look on the internet. They're going to throw them up on the screen. There they are. And so let me give you the bottom line. It pretty much boils down to if you eat right, you get the right amount of rest, and you exercise, you'll probably live a healthy life. I wish it was that easy, right? I wish it was that easy. But try and try, we so often fail. We completely do what? We disregard the list. We just don't want to do those things. Now, there's no shortage of information. We can go all over the internet and find countless numbers of web pages designed and designated for health, growing a healthy body, right? And there's no shortage of inspiration. Lord knows we've got all kinds of marketers to tell us that, right? whether it's Nike telling us to just do it, right? Or some other company, they want, to just, they want us to think that inspiration is all it takes. But really, when it comes to growing a healthy body, we really have to start with a good foundation, the right foundation, and we have to have the proper motivation. And so I think about what does the right foundation mean? Well, the right foundation gives us the right perspective and the right purpose. And so I think about my journey in making a healthy food choice. In particular, I think about my journey with something as simple as kale. Yes, Jim Gaffigan, we're going to talk about kale, all right? <laughs> kale. Now, I was originally brought up, kale, this is my foundational belief was that kale has no nutritional value whatsoever. There's no benefit and there's no purpose to it. Well, but the right foundation belief is there actually is. There's a lot of nutrients in kale, right? Especially important if you've ever had heart surgery. And so therefore, my foundational belief, my foundational perspective has changed about kale. Now, let me just assure you, kale could be a lot of different things, right? So if you are averse to kale, please, just represents a healthy food choice, all right? Amen? You with me on that? All right, motivation, let's talk about that then. But, so I can have the right foundation, but if I don't have the right motivation, am I gonna actually do, and am I actually gonna believe and do what I need to do? So the right motivation then, it gives us the ability to both want and do what is right. And therefore, we think about something like kale. Now, there's a lot of motivators out there for us when it comes to health and fitness, right? One of those is fear, and one of those is guilt. Now, guilt and fear, they can be powerful motivators. Let's, let's agree on that, right? But are they the right motivation? I mean, if somebody were to say, you need to eat kale or you'll die, you're probably going to eat kale for a while. <laughs> and if somebody were to say, honey, if you loved me, you'd eat kale, right? Now, that too is a powerful motivator, and it might for a short term. But what we really need is, when it comes to growing a healthy body, we've got to have the right foundation, the right motivation that's going to last a lifetime. And so where do we turn to find the right foundation and the right motivation when it comes to our bodies? And I believe the best place to turn is we turn to the creator of all life, his guide to healthy living, also called the Bible, all right? So we're going to go to the Bible and we're going to see what does God say about our bodies. And if you go from, from front to back of your Bibles, you'll find when it comes to your body, there's really one foundational truth. And that is that God is for the body and the body is for God. God is for your body and your body is for God. Now, one verse that so powerfully illustrates that for us is Ephesians 2.10. And reading from Ephesians 2.10, we read, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared 
in advance for us to do. Do you hear that? Our bodies are God's handiwork. So our bodies created by God. It's his design, his unique, intricate design. And we also learn that our bodies were created with a purpose. And that purpose is to do good works. And we also learn that our bodies weren't just created accidentally, like some would say, or even the lies of the enemy would say. We were created in love. We were created in the unconditional love of Jesus Christ. And in him, have an eternal relationship so that we can, in partnership with him, do God's good works. God's good works to fulfill God's plan. That's the purpose for our bodies. And so we think about that, that God is for our bodies and our body is for God. And I think in this verse, we can also find the bedrock of the motivation is why I should care about my body and why I should care for my body. And we look at this and we say that we realize that I need to know why I want to make changes to my health. I can look to this verse. And there's really a couple of simple aspects of that that will help motivate us, that help propel us. And for me, when it came to coming from heart surgery and going through the struggles I went through and then somehow having to learn how to walk again, how to do things again, find a love again for exercise, eat the right foods, all of it came down to I had to have the right foundation and the right motivation. And that motivation, Ephesians 2.10 tells me it's two things. One, that we should care for our bodies as stewards of God's body. You see, God is the creator. Now, last week, Pastor Keith spoke, and he shared a really, really, really profound statement. Now, he said a lot of profound statements last week. Not because you're here, I didn't say that, but he said a lot of profound statements. Pastor Keith said, creation establishes ownership. And when it comes to our body, God is the creator. And therefore, that makes him the, the owner. And we are then stewards of God's body. Now, I realize that runs completely counterculture because our culture says what? It's my body. I'll do what I want to. But God's truth says otherwise. And why is that? Because he designed you. He loves you. He created you in love for a purpose. We are to be stewards of God's body. And so when we think about, in my life, I had to make some really hard choices, some hard choices eating choices, things like kale. And although I said, oh, I got to eat kale, inside my taste buds were saying, but I want to eat, I want to eat cake. I want to eat what I've always eaten, little Debbie's. But look at Amy, my wife Amy, look at Amy, it's got oatmeal. (laughs) There's got a lot of other nasty stuff that I probably shouldn't be putting in my body. But I didn't make that choice out of my own will, I had to come to a point where I recognize it's God's sovereignty, this is his body, and I need to be a good steward of his God, his body. And the second thing I think we can learn is that we should care for our bodies as partners with God. Do you realize that? You see, in that verse, it says that God has prepared things for me to do, good works for me to do in advance. And so I want to partner with God to fulfill his purpose and plan in my life. And I don't do it alone. I know that as a believer in Jesus Christ that God has also given me a very powerful partner, the Holy Spirit. And so for me to make any change on my own, on my own strength, my own will, ain't, isn't gonna happen. So I partner with God to do his work, but also empowered by the Holy Spirit. And in that, I also find that there's grace. There's grace when I fail to do what I should be doing empowered by the Holy Spirit. Now, we don't do good works. I want to be clear on this. We don't do good works to earn God's love. He already loves you. It's the love that Bryn just sang about, that reckless love. He'll climb the highest mountain. He'll kick down walls. He'll tear down lies because he loves you. And he created you for a purpose. We do good works because we want to share that love. And we share that love with others. And God uses our bodies to do that. Now, I want to make sure we understand that, that God can use us 
no matter our health. God can use our bodies no matter our health because we realize that some health issues are totally out of, out of our control. But what we need to understand is if we are doing things to our body that are harming our body, are we gonna be as effective for God in the long term so that we can fulfill the purpose and plan that he has for us in our lives? And also, a note for parents and grandparents, for your children as well. We have to be good stewards of their bodies as well. So we care for them in partnership and in stewardship. And when we think about our bodies, we have to be very careful. Because when it comes to caring for our bodies, if we're not careful, we might be motivated by the wrong reason. And so one of the great verses that helps remind us of that is in 1 Corinthians 10, 31. And it says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God, not ourselves. And so in our quest for healthy lives, we shouldn't be pursuing those because of we want to go look at me. We say, I pursue a healthy life because I say, look at him. Look at God. That's why we do it. And when we think about that, if we're not careful, if we are not careful, we can fall into the trap of self-absorption and self-worship. And so that's why we need to always remind ourselves we do it for the glory of God. And now how do we respond? How do we respond to this amazing love and this amazing call that God has for us? Well, we should respond the way the Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, where he says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. You see, we should care for our bodies then as an act of worship. And so we make healthy choices, we make them joyfully, we make them willingly, and we make them humbly because in so doing, it's an act of worship. Isn't that amazing? That I can make a healthy choice. Maybe it's kale, but maybe it's exercise. Maybe it's stopping some unhealthy habit. I can do that humbly, willingly, and joyfully because I want to do it as an act of worship of the creator. And so I think those are powerful motivators for us. We've got the right foundation, the right motivation, and we can make change in our life through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so as I think about my journey, I wanted to share with you just six practical tips that I believe honor God and will allow you to take simple steps moving forward. If you were to say today, I want to make changes in the way I care for my body, I want to give you six steps, six tips to do that. Number one, develop a plan by seeking wise counsel. Nobody's going to take off and go off and do something unless they make a plan. Well, they shouldn't, right? And so we should always start, when it comes to caring for our bodies, start with the one who gives all wisdom, and that's God. And so I would want to come before God and say, Lord, is there an area in my life where I'm not honoring you, where I'm not caring for my body as a good steward in partnership with you? Can you show me what that is? And then I need to be open to what he says and receive what he gives me. And I can also go to God's word. And when I go to God's word, I'll find verses like we find in Proverbs 15, that said, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. And so I need to look for some advisors to help me with my plan. Now, where do I go? Well, a good place to start for most of us would be with our family doctor. They know our health history. They can help us. They know probably what we need to get healthier. So that's a great place to start, a great advisor. Other places you can get good advice, some good resources. One of the best resources I've found, a published resource, is called The Daniel Plan. Now, it's a book written by three different authors. The reason I like this book is because it provides a biblical perspective, first and foremost, and then it has foundations in medical, and it's also got some nutritional and exercise physiology. Great book, great resource. We do have some copies available out in the lobby. We're selling those at our cost. So please, if you would like to get, learn more, The Daniel Plan is a great book to start. Another resource that we want to make available to you is through our Shoreline Health Community. We're offering an Optimizing Your Health session on this Wednesday night. 
It's a special session to help you develop new strategies in your eating and your exercise as you come in the new year. So I want to encourage you. Again, it's in your bulletin. Those are just a couple of resources that I'd recommend. Now, we also need to think our next, the next tip that we have here is to feel frequently, moderately, and timely. Now, there is a time for feasting and there's a time for fasting. But most often, we should be thinking of our bodies as being fueled, fueling our bodies, giving our bodies what they need when they need it. And so we think about feasting. Well, I just want to tell you right now, it's okay to feast every now and then. It's okay to enjoy a full meal and a dessert. And yes, I'm going to say it. It's okay to have a donut now and then. Amen? (laughs) We enjoy it with thankfulness. And we do so because we know we celebrate that God, he creates food. He gave us the good gift of food. Now, the only problem is, if we're always feasting, guess what's happening? We spend our whole life feasting, then our bodies begin to show and feel the effects of feasting. And so we want to honor God by making sure that we provide the body what it needs, when it needs. And that's what most science is finding Right now, actually, most science is finding that but eating and providing the body what it needs, when it needs, is actually the most healthy option. Specifically, there are scientists who come up with this idea, it's called intermittent fasting, where if you set a time in the morning, you eat no earlier than that time, and you set a time in the evening where you eat no later than that time, maybe 12 hours, maybe 8 hours, and you eat six moderate meals throughout the day, you actually will have more health benefits from that. So again, if your doctor, if your medical condition allows that, you might want to look that up, some more ideas for you to eat healthy. And if we talk about eating, we do have to talk about eating something like God-made food instead of man-made food. See, that's the preferred way to eat. We should eat God-made food instead of man-made food. Now, the realization is that we know we're going to have to eat some man-made foods, right? But I want to encourage you, I want you to think about something. What's the purpose and why do most man-made foods exist? What's their purpose? They want you to buy more, right? And so there will be all kinds of ingredients in there that might encourage you to buy more. And so I want to just give you some some kind of general rules, some criteria. So if you come to a, a particular piece of food, say it's oatmeal cream pies, and you look and you see that there are more than three ingredients on the back of this particular box, you should say, ooh, that's a warning. So in soccer, what happens when you get a little rough? They give you a yellow card, right? So when I go to food, I look, more than three ingredients, yellow card, which means radar's up, I need to check, right? I've got to be a good steward, right? Now, if I come across a couple of different ingredients, one in particular I want to tell you today that any one of us can make this change in our diet. Any one of us. One particular, one particular item to look for, high fructose corn syrup. You might see it as HFCS. And why is high fructose corn syrup so dangerous? Well, it has been linked to chronic obesity, chronic liver disease, as well as type 2 diabetes, and all kinds of other nasty health issues. High fructose corn syrup. Why do they put it in our foods? Because it's cheaper to do it. And it gives you more sweetness. And so if I was going to go on a picnic with my bride, my bride Amy over here, and we were going to go on a picnic, and I said, hey, honey, I got the picnic basket ready to go. She'd say, okay, let's take a look and see what you got in the basket. So I go, and I pull out and say, honey, I got my dew. I got my dew. <laughs> so you're going, no, please don't go there, Pastor Sean. You got it. Hey, guess what? Number one ingredient, carbonated water. Number two, high fructose corn syrup. What are we going to do? Red card. That ain't going in my picnic basket, right? Out of the picnic basket, it comes. I love you, honey. If you love me you would not drink Mountain Dew. I also know that, I also know that we also have, have to go out and grill, so we're going to have some barbecue sauce. And I said, honey, I picked this up because it says it's made with pure honey. Guess what else it's made with? Number one ingredient, high fructose corn syrup. What are we going to do, Shoreline? Red card. It's not going in my picnic basket. Oh, man, well, honey, you know. Okay, well, honey, I brought along some energy drink, sports drink, because you know these are healthy, right? Look, it says right here. It says it's got sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. And she says, well, yeah, but check it out. Number one ingredient, water. Number two, high fructose corn syrup. You got it, Shoreline. Red card. And then I go, honey, say, what's left in my basket? I got an apple. And you're probably going to think, I'm going to say kale, right? 
no. I got LaCroix. All right, all right. I got LaCroix. So we are going to think healthy. We have to make good decisions. And so one of the ways we do that is we want to try to eat God-made food rather than man-made food. Now, we also understand that no, no person's expected to eat a perfect diet, right? Nor are we. So let us free ourselves from that. I think the fourth tip we can give you is take small, intentional, take small, intentional, consistent steps to achieve the best long-term results. See, every step matters. And the key there is patience and discipline. Now, again, that's not what marketers want you to believe. They think, they want you to believe it's overnight, right? I can shed those 40 pounds overnight if you take this pill. That's probably not healthy, right? So we want to think long-term, small, intentional steps. And what are a couple of simple steps you can take other than just looking for high fructose corn syrup? Simple steps. If you want to get better rest at night, the studies say you need about six to eight hours of sleep a night. If you want to get better rest, wind down by turning off one hour prior to the time you want to sleep. Wind down by turning off those screens, those cell phones, those iPads, and yes, your television. One simple step you can take. Wind down by turning off. Also, if you want to get a little more exercise, a little more activity in the day, park further as opposed to closer. So instead of fighting for that close spot at the mall, find a spot that's further away. Now, for those of you that came late this morning, we do that every week at Shoreline, don't you? You get to park down on the bottom level. So just think of Shoreline's helping you in your journey of health, okay? <laughs> We get to do that, so it's great. Yeah, so small steps, small intentional steps. And really, the fifth one is run while you can, walk whenever you can, and move however you can. Be active any way you can, while you can. Our bodies need activity, especially as we age. This is especially important. Now, ladies, I'm gonna give you one tip. Did you know lifting weights can actually improve and increase your bone density? So if you have a history of osteoporosis in your family, lifting weights can actually help. So it is important. Activity for all ages is important. And so we think about that, and one of the things you gotta realize is that not all of us can run. That's okay. We gotta find enjoyable activities that we can do. And one of the ways we can do that is we can celebrate and enjoy one of God's greatest gifts to mankind, Monterey County. Amen? And we get to live here, and we get to exercise here. We should enjoy that good gift. And the last tip I want to give you, but it's probably the most important tip, is that if you go alone, expect to fall, and most likely fail. Now, what I'm getting at here is the importance of accountability and surrounding yourself with a community that is going to support you and encourage you. Now, Day one of the army, the army issued me two things. They issued me a weapon, and they issued me a battle buddy. And guess what that battle buddy, everywhere I went, the battle buddy went. And everywhere he went, I went. Why do you suppose that is? Because there was accountability there. And so I want to ask you today, who's your battle buddy? If you decide today to make a journey, I, I want to make some changes in my health, who's going to come alongside and partner with you? Who's going to support you? Who's going to help you make the right choices? Now, if you're married, I will tell you, highly encourage you to start with your spouse. For me, my battle buddy for the last 34 years, sitting right over there in the front row, my bride. But in addition to your spouse, you also have children. Some of you have adult children. One of mine is sitting over there in the front row. He and my other three children have been incredible motivators for me to live a healthy life. And so I would encourage you to look around and go, who's my battle buddy? Who in my family can support me? And if you're single, you have friends. You have friends who are, who are pursuing a healthy life. Reach out to them and have them come around and support you. And if you're looking for more battle buddies, we actually got a couple of different ways we can help you in that here at Shoreline. One is we're actually starting a growth group. In mid-February, we'll actually be walking through the Daniel plan walking through the Daniel plan and two different growth groups, one on Tuesday night and one on Thursday night. So if you would like to say, I, I would really be interested in trying to see what the Daniel plan's about and you want to come alongside and come on other people who want to be on that same journey with you, I encourage you to get signed up for that growth group. You can do that online. You can do that at the Connection Center. And finally, if you think about 
When I walked up today, there was something different about the courtyard. I saw somebody out there playing pickleball, I think. Those are our shoreline fitness communities. And we actually want to invite you to be part of one of those communities. And so one of the ways you can find battle buddies is to participate in one of those different communities. Now, Pastor Nate Tibbs is out there. He's got all more, a lot more details on that. There's a lot of other communities. But the purpose of those communities is to give you that support you need and encourage you to continue to stay active and to continue to pursue a healthy life. And so as I close, I'm going to invite the band to come back up. And I just wish growing a healthy body was as simple as eating kale. You know, I really do. But it's not, right? It's not. It's a long journey. Now, I don't know what your kale is. I don't know if, it, if it's eating right or if it's exercising more or maybe it's some harmful substance or some addiction or something you have been doing in your life that you know is not honoring to God and it's not caring for my body. I don't know what that is for you. But here's the reality. God does. And so as I close, I'm going to pray us out, and then we're going to sing a song. And in this song, I want you just to, just to release that to God, just to say, God, this is what you've brought to my mind. As, as Pastor Sean's been speaking, the Holy Spirit's been working. I, I just want to give this to you. But I know I can't do it on my own. I can only do it in the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we... We reflect on the goodness of your creation and your amazing love that you would give us through Jesus Christ. And you would allow us to partner with you. Father, may we honor you as good stewards and as good partners. And may we do it all for your glory and not ours. And so Lord, now as we sing this song and we reflect on the goodness of your love and your desire for us to live a healthy life, Lord, may this be our declaration May we proclaim this with all of our hearts and we say this all in Jesus' name, amen.